Snails appear in a wide variety of sizes, colors, and shells. A snail shell is beyond being just an organ, from the medium-sized brown snail with a light base shell to the bright red, yellow, and black stripes on the extremely rare Red Racer Nerite Snail. Snails will not get out of their shells even if a dangerous animal peeks at them. The snail's shell exists from its birth, is attached to the snail, and it grows in a spiral shape with the snail. How do snails get their shells? The snail's physique comes from the soft material which makes up the shell, the central layer, which is composed of shell nacre or mother of pearl, a dense, horizontally filled type of conchiolin, which is located atop the periostracum. Snails have a coelom, a body divided into three parts, head, visceral mass, and muscular foot, along with organs for breathing, digesting, excretion, circulation, nerve conduction, and reproduction, as with every other animal. Snails also favor the top leaf litter of woods, grass of old fields, and wetlands, but they might also be seen in habitats which are more frequently interrupted, like fruit trees, occupied gardens, fields, riverside, suburbs, and even cities. Are snails born with their shells? Snails, oysters, clams, and mussels have an organ named a mantle to emit calcium carbonate layers that harden and solidify, and so the snail's shell shapes to be what we're all familiar with. However, the shell is translucent and sensitive by nature. Shells need calcium to solidify their shells, and a recently hatched snail gets calcium by swallowing its very own egg covering, meaning that, yes, technically snails are born with shells, they're just thin. The embryonic shell, also named protoconch, has a scientific sculptural structure from the rest of the shell. Once a snail has hatched from its egg, its shell begins to take this familiar shape. The shell grows as the snail does, and the amount of whorls increase as the shell grows. A reflected or dense lip exists on the adult snail shell of some specific types, like Caminidae and Pupindus, ending the entirety of the development process. The shell reaches the adult level anywhere between the ages of four and a half to five and a half. Other types of snails, like Charopidae, pinwheel snails, and Helicarionidae, glass snails, expose non-determinant growth, and the snail continues to add to the shell after reaching adulthood, which is a procedure named gerontic growth. Snails need a diet which is rich in protein, conchiolin, and calcium in order to build a hard shell. Snails also have the ability to fix some minor damages which they may sustain to their shell, but they cannot regrow it entirely. A snail's shell is necessary to its survival, much as the bones of humans are. The snail's shell is used to hide the snail whenever a predator is near, and if predators try to take the snail out of their shell, they can only get a portion of it out as the snail is bound to enter their shell. Yet, sometimes snails don't have shells. Snails and slugs with no observable shell are named land snails. So how do snails develop their shells? Snails are born from eggs. Despite the fact that some species are ovoviviparous, meaning that their eggs hatch inside the mother's body, the parents typically put them on loose soil or attach them to rocks. After this, the infants wriggle out and face the world. A snail shell starts growing during the gestation phase, their hatching period. Making and growing shells is a procedure that takes a long time. Snail shells are mainly composed of calcium carbonate, though a small sum of protein also engages in the mix. Mollusks, like snails, have a crucial organ named the mantle, and in order for the organism to build these shells, the mantle creates an electric current that helps in pushing calcium ions into position. These eggs hatch after a few weeks, and a little baby snail comes out with their shells fully intact. The baby snail's shell have no color. The shells are fragile and sensitive at this phase. The baby snail eats the egg from which it hatched because calcium in the egg helps it when it comes to solidifying its shell. Baby Cornu asperum is the name which is given to a baby snail of the brown snail type. The body of this type of snail is brownish, soft, and covered with sticky mucus, and its shells are yellow or cream-colored with brown spiral lines. A protoconch, the first section of a snail's shell, grows before it hatches. Healthy food becomes a priority as our little snails come out from the egg. A small opening, or mouth, is contained within the protoconch. From below, the mantle constructs a new layer of calcium carbonate and proteins in the mouth. The shell grows as the fresh material hardens at the mouth. 
the spiral coils emerge around the protoconch, which, little by little, coils around and around, finally reaching the apex, or climax, of the snail's developing shell. The protoconch will either remain in place forever, or it will break off at some point. That is something which depends on the species. To grow the shell, snails require calcium. As mentioned previously, newborn snails are compelled with the instinct to eat whatever stays of the calcium-rich egg from which they have just been born, something which births a habit. Snails of all types and sizes must continue to eat calcium-rich food, and this is why the mollusk is usually considered to be a pest, given that a few of them love eating spinach, broccoli, turnips, and other calcium-rich vegetables which could usually be found in gardens. They also get their calcium fix by ingesting dirt or by chewing on limestone, strangely enough. What are snail shells made of? Snails, as well as any other mollusk, use a tactic known as biomineralization to build their shells. They release an organic matrix of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates, which gives a basis for the hard parts of the shell. This is done by using a specific gland which is connected to the shell. Calcium carbonate is the material which forms the shells of mollusks and seashells too. Calcite and arginate are two distinguished types of it which are the primary materials. Snails are gastropods, which accord to the mollusca phylum. Many molluscans have shells, and there are over 100,000 molluscan species which we are currently aware of. Oysters, the nautilus, clams, and the living fossil, chitin, are some other well-known shelled molluscans. Slugs, essentially a larger shellless form of the snail, octopuses, and squids are instances of non-shelled mollusks. Molluscan shells form a complex lattice of organic compounds and materials. Mammalian bones contain a calcium mineral matrix along with the protein collagen. Mollusk shells, on the other hand, vary from bone in terms of the minerals which they are made up of, along with the other types of minerals which can be found in their shells. The mineral composition of shells can range from 95 to 99 percent by weight. Organic matter makes up the extra 1 to 5 percent. This transforms the shells into biologically constructed rocks, essentially. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.